بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This week the government announced strict action against drugs and therefore it's important to remind ourselves what is the duty of taqwa that we have towards drugs Yes, the Qur'an has an openly mention about drugs specifically. Yes, there are no hadith or riwayah which mention drugs directly. But whatever drugs do, the function, the effect, the consequences, those are mentioned in the Qur'an. There were some self-destructive chemicals, behaviors, activities that were prevalent in the time of the revelation of the Quran and the interpretation and explanation by the Ahlul Bayt where we can learn what is the guidance from God about such chemicals and such behaviors and such activities. So for example, the Quran prohibits alcohol. الْخَمْرُ And Allah lists down several things. رِجْسٌ مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ This is fisk. This is evil. This is harmful. This is the work of the devil. Alcohol basically intoxicates. And when the imams alayhi salam were asked, is only alcohol haram in itself? And the imams have explained that no, alcohol is haram because of its effect, the intoxicating effect. Haram li fi'liha, haram li fasadiha. It has a damaging, destructive, harmful effect on the body, on the mind, on the soul, on the family, on the society, on the nation. Alcohol, that's why Allah has made it haram. No, alcohol has been mentioned as ummul fawahish wal kabair, the root of all sins. And as an illustration, the Imam salam says, if you can imagine all the sins to be in a house, and that house should have a door, and the door should have a lock, and the lock should have a key, the key is alcohol. It opens the door to all evil, ultimately leading to murder. And therefore, Allah has prohibited it. Based on this, the mujtahid say that therefore, any behavior, any activity, any chemicals, any consumptions which have the damaging effects equal to alcohol, therefore also will have the prohibition as strict as alcohol. That particular drug becomes haram. No, in fact there are other riwayat which say that beware, some things are so dangerous, so harmful, that yes, its harmful effect may show itself maybe at an advanced level. But you stop right at the beginning. Don't even reach that advanced level. Oh, if I consume, those who want to justify consumption, a bottle of the intoxicant doesn't affect me, just relaxes me. So you're saying alcohol is haram because of its, its, its intoxication doesn't affect me. I'm a, I'm a strong man, not like these other children who are easily affected. No, the Quran says, the hadith explains that what is dangerous even at a higher level should be avoided even at a lower level. Even a drop becomes haram. Even sitting on a table where consumption takes place of this haram, drink becomes haram therefore and therefore the fatwa is anything whose harm harm is known no it's not known it is not a hundred percent but there is reasonable convincing evidence ninety percent eighty percent seventy percent effect is there no less than fifty percent the risk is there that this particular activity or consumption can have a damaging effect if that risk is reasonable and sensible people avoid it and if the risk is serious enough as to damage the body seriously then it becomes haram so take for example there are several drugs in the market take one example marijuana marijuana 
has known has known effects. Psychologists have, and and and, and experts have studied the effects. So, for example, they advise the driver not to consume because when you drive, it affects your concentration ability. No, it, it slows down your response, your ability to even see or listen to a signal is slowed down. So don't drive, not only when you're under the influence of alcohol, even under the influence of drugs. Or, they say we have seen, it disturbs the emotional health of a person. Satisfaction with life is lowered. Memory problems appear. You start feeling happy for no reason. Your emotions are disturbed now. There is physical effect on the body there is mental effect on the body mental effect mental effect on the brain in that it induces hallucinations psychosis psychosis you le you lose touch with reality you hear things which are not there you see things which are not there induced and provoked and facilitated by this drug use enough reason to declare it to be haram and and typically in all the other haram activities it starts slowly the quran says la tattabi'u khutuwat shaytan beware don't follow the stop the steps of shaytan he gradually entices you so it all begins with I, I, I'm just testing. I just want to taste it. How, how does it feel? He's claiming he feels very happy. Step number one. Step number two. Oh, it's good. It makes you feel good. But I, I don't see any harm. So the use becomes a little more regular. But it's still controlled. When the person wants to stop, they don't use it. Step three now. Now the misuse begins. You are seeking that happiness. So you go look for it. Not that because you happen to be in a company and you offered it, so you took it. No, you look for that particular drug to get that high effect. And then step number four, it becomes more habitual. Now you're used to it. You can't function. Without your morning cigarette or your morning coffee, you don't feel well. Without your morning dose of the marijuana, you don't feel well. That's addiction, Sasa. And of course, later on, there is depression and there is psychosis. And basically, the person becomes powerless. The craving is so strong, they cannot stop it. They cannot function. And that's what Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam mentions, Malaka and Halaka. It will come and control you and it'll lead you to your damnation and you can't stop. Well, if that is the eventual predicament of such people, the hadith says, don't take that first step. Kwanini, oh, but I'm strong. I can judge. I'm smart. I can know when it is harmful and when no. Samahani. <laughs> Psychological researches show we don't know who becomes addicted. Some people do, some people don't. We don't know who. Yes, there are certain risk factors. If you already have psychosis in the family, father, mother, relative is already undergoing a psychotic, schizophrenic situation, the chances are higher that you may get it if you use it even for the first time. But even others, the general population, they are at risk. You know, I like to give this example. When you go on the flight, the uh, steward will, will warn you that you need to wear your seatbelt and there is these safety procedures you need to observe. So, so you say, ah, I've traveled 10 times, 20 times, 100 times, nothing has happened. So you begin to ignore. 99 times you were safe. The one time out of the hundred trips you made, you ignored it, you dismissed it, and it struck you, and you were unprepared. It was too late. We don't know who gets addicted to alcohol. We don't know who ultimately gets addicted to drugs. But when they do get addicted, it destroys them. Of course, there is a way to protect ourselves, and therefore, we need to take precaution. 
and prevention. In the Quran, Allah mentions the example of Prophet Ya'qub salam that when the brothers came, the sons came as brothers, they said, let Yusuf salam come with us. Oh, we're just going for fun, relaxation, recreation. We're going to enjoy ourselves, safe play. We're just playing uh, activities out there in the desert. So Ya'qub salam tells them that, قَالَ إِنِّي لَيَحْزُنُنِي أَن تَذْهَبُوا بِهِ It grieves me that you're going to separate him from him, from me. But more important, أَخَافُ أَن يَأْكُلَهُ الذِّئِبِ وَأَنْتُمْ عَنْهُ غَافِلُونَ I fear that out there in the desert, the wolf will attack him and you don't even know, you are busy in your own play, you are distracted, you are pre-engaged and he will suffer a great damage by the attack. Parents need to be aware that when they send their teenager out there in the open, you need to know there are wolves out there ready to attack. You need to know where they go. You need to know who the friends are, what time do they go, what time they come back. I'm sorry to say this, but these are practical examples. The teenager leaves home, says, I'm going to the masjid, I'm going to the Imam Barga. And yet when they come here, they've got another plan. Nobody's monitoring, nobody's supervising, nobody's watching. They left at a time when they were told. They come back at the time when they're told. In between what they did, the parent doesn't know. Ya'qub was very careful. Find out who you are going with. Where are you going? What is the scenario there? What is the protection there? What is the prevention there? You're not confident? Don't do that. Make a team of parents who become guardians, who become supervisors, who become monitors. Not every parent can be there every day for every activity. But you can have a team of reliable, respectable, responsible parents. And in case it's not children, it's adults, God forbid, who have been attracted and trapped by these drugs. So yes, the way is open, it's available. You know, amazing, the Quran, for example, in Surah... Uh, Furqan says that it is sinful to do zina, sinful to do shirk, sinful to kill. If you are going to be punished, you will be there in the fire of hell forever. Lakini illa man taba wa amana wa amila salihan. The door is open for tawbah. You can change till the last moment in this dunya, you can change. So even if adults are involved, we prevent the teens, but for the adults, we can still save them. Let's pray to Allah for tawfiq. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal Asr. Allah swears by time. This time when we are suddenly alerted to the dangers in our nation, we need to be alert. Inna l-insana lafi khusr. Man, you are constantly under attack. You can be doomed if you are not careful. Except for those who have received the higher wisdom and they know what is the right path. الصالحات, and then they follow that right path. بالحق, and then they spread this alert and guidance to others. بالصبر, and collectively fight against evil with perseverance and determination. Sadaqallahu al